All right, welcome back to Mrs. B Reads. We are working on Linda Sue Park, A Long Walk to Water, and this is period seven. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. Chapter 16, page 97. Ah, oh, middle school. Okay. So we're back in Naya's story. Southern Sudan, 2009. After the excitement of seeing that first spray of water, ooh, but remember the first spray of water? What was wrong with the water? Remember, after all that work, it was what? They couldn't even drink it after all of that Around. business. The villagers went back to work. Several men gathered in front of Naya's house. They had tools with them, hoes and spades and... Sites? Sites? Sites. I'm getting there. Her father went out to meet them. The men walked together to a spot beyond the second big tree and began clearing the land. Why are they doing that? Naya watched them for a few moments. Her father saw her and waved. She put the plastic can down and ran over to him. Papa, what are you doing? Clearing the land here, getting ready to build. To build what? Naya's father smiled. Can't you guess? <laughs> what do you think they're going to build? Another house. A house, a well. A road. A road. Like a well. All right, let's find out. Brady, sit up straight, please. Mm -hmm. Sit up straight, please. Thank you. All right, Rochester, New York, 1996 to 2003. So this goes over seven years. Salva had been in Rochester for nearly a month and still had not seen a single dirt road. Unlike Southern Sudan, it seemed that here in America, every road was paved, which for the most part they are, right? Unless like you're really out in the country. At times, the cars whizzed by so fast, he was amazed that anyone on foot could cross safely. His new father, Chris, told him that dirt roads did exist out in the countryside, but there were none in Salva's new neighborhood. All the buildings had electricity. There were white people everywhere. Snow fell from the sky for hours at a time and then stayed on the ground for days. Sometimes it would start to melt during the day, but before it all disappeared, more snow would fall. Salva's new mother, Louise, told him it would probably be April, three more months before the snow went away completely. Can you imagine how unusual this is for Salva? Like, this is really, right? That's a little unsettling. The first several weeks of Salva's new life were so bewildering that he was grateful for his studies. His lessons, especially English, gave him something to concentrate on, a way to block out the confusion for an hour or two at, time, at a time. His new family helped too. All of them were kind to him, patiently explaining the millions of things he had to learn. It had taken four days for Salva to travel from the Ifo refugee camp to his new home in New York. There were times when he could hardly believe he was still on the same planet. I was just about to say, he must feel like he's on a different planet, right? Think about that, so different. He's going to all these different places. Yeah, totally different. Now that Salva was learning more than a few simple words, he found that the English language, <laughs> he found the English language quite confusing. This is why English is so hard to learn. Look at this. Like the letters O-U-G-H, rough, though, fought, through, and bow. The same letters were pronounced so many different ways. Or how a word had to be changed depending on the sentence. You said chickens when you meant the living birds that walked and squawked and laid eggs but it was chicken with no S when it was on your plate ready to be eaten, right? We're having chicken for dinner. No one goes home and says, what's for dinner tonight? Chickens, right? That was correct even if you had cooked 100 chickens. That's weird. Sometimes he wondered if he would ever be able to speak and read English well, but slowly with hours of hard work over the months and years, his English improved. Remembering Michael, Salva also joined a volleyball team it was fun playing volleyball, just as it had been at the camp. Setting and spiking the ball were the same in any language, which is why the Olympics are so cool. Because you have athletes from all over the entire planet who speak all different languages, but play the same sport. And the sports are played the same. So like Isn't a, that cool? So it's like an ultimate sports league. It really is, yeah. Salva had been in Rochester for more than six years now. Oh my gosh. He was going to college and had decided to study business. He had a vague idea that he would like to return to Sudan someday to help the people who lived there. Sometimes that seemed like an impossible notion. In his homeland, there was so much war and destruction, poverty, disease, and starvation. So many problems that had not been solved by governments or rich people or big aid organizations. What could he possibly do to help? 
Salva thought about this question a lot, but no answer came to him. One evening, at the end of a long day of study, Salva sat down at the family computer and opened his email. He was surprised to see a message from a cousin of his, someone he barely knew. The cousin was working for a relief agency in Zimbabwe. Salva clicked open the message. His eyes read the words, but at first his brain could not comprehend them. United Nations Clinic, your father, stomach surgery. Salva read the words again and again. Then he jumped to his feet and ran through the house to find Chris and Louise. My father, he shouted, they found my father. After several exchanges of emails, Salva learned that the cousin had not actually seen or spoken to his father. Womp womp. The clinic where his father was recovering was in a remote part of Southern Sudan. There was no telephone or mail service, no way of communicating with the clinic staff. Remember, this was in the days before cellular data and cell phones like we have today, okay? The staff kept lists of all the patients they treated. These lists were submitted to the United Nations aid agencies. Salva's cousin worked for one of the agencies and he had seen the name of Salva's father on a list. What are the odds of that happening? Salva immediately began planning to travel to Sudan. But with the war still raging, it was very difficult to make the arrangements. He had to get permits, fill out dozens of forms, and organize plane flights and car transport in a region where there were no airports or roads. Salva and Chris and Louise as well spent hours on the phone to various agencies and offices. It took not days or weeks, but months before all the plans were in place. And there was no way to get a message to the hospital. At times, Salva felt almost frantic at the delays and frustrations. What if my father leaves the hospital without telling anyone where he's going? What if I get there too late? I will never be able to find him again. At last, all the forms were filled out and all the paperwork was in order. Salva flew in a jet to New York City, another one to Amsterdam, and a third to Kampala in Uganda. That's a country in Africa. In Kampala, it took him two days, two days to get through customs and immigration. Oh my goodness before he could board a smaller plane to go to Juba in Southern Sudan. Then he rode in a Jeep on dusty dirt roads into the bush. Holy macaroni. How familiar everything was and yet how different. The unpaved roads, the scrubby bushes, brush, bushes, sorry, bushes and trees, the huts roofed with sticks bound together. Everything was just as Salva remembered it as if he had left only yesterday. But how long ago was he there, you guys? Do the math. How long? How long has he been gone? Yeah. Nineteen eighty-five is when he ran from school that day with the fighting, and now it's two thousand three. How many years is that? Do the math. Eighteen years later. Oh my goodness. Eighteen years later. Salva remembered it as if he had left only yesterday. At the same time, the memories of his life in Sudan were very distant. How could memories feel so close and so far away at the same time? After many hours of jolting and bumping along the roads in the Jeep, after nearly a week of exhausting travel, Salva entered the shanty, which means like a, just a cheap little lean-to, right? It's not even like a real building the shanty that served as a recovery room at the makeshift hospital. A white woman stood to greet him. Hello, he said. I am looking for a patient named Marion Dute Arik. Do you think his dad's still alive? Don't forget to like and subscribe.